when I see a health practitioner, certainly the mandatory notification is the last thing on my mind. My immediate concern is them and why they're there and why they've come to see me. But sometimes there are flags that appear, which means I do need to consider whether a notification is necessary. Mandatory notifications. What you need to know. A psychologist's perspective. I'm Jeanette Stewart. I'm a clinical psychologist and clinical neuropsychologist. I've been working in this field for over 24 years, both in the private sector and also the public sector. I wanted to be involved in this video because I think it provides a really good opportunity for practitioners to become aware of the changes in legislation. The important thing is that the message gets out clearly and accurately so that practitioners know when they do have to make a notification, but importantly, when they don't need to make a notification. Fear of a mandatory notification shouldn't stop practitioners from seeking help. Some of the patients that I've seen that are registered as healthcare practitioners have been concerned that coming to see me for an assessment might lead to a notification. But this is actually very rare and I can reassure them of this. In most cases, seeking treatment will not lead to a mandatory notification. I recently saw a surgeon, for example. Now, he came because he was worried about his memory. He'd done all the right things. He'd gone to see his GP. The GP had referred him to me. He'd gone to see a neurologist. The neurologist had done some investigations. He came to me, I did a full assessment, and his neuropsychological profile was absolutely clear. Now in that case, there was no demonstrable reason why there should be a notification made. Practitioners who are aware of their own health and well-being are already taking steps to get well. Some time ago, I was asked to see a medical student. Now, this young chap had had a bump on the head, a sort of concussion, and had lost consciousness. So the board were concerned uh, to find out whether there were any cognitive impairments. And in fact, he himself had notified the board. So he was very sensible in doing that, and, and also very insightful that this could be an issue for him. I assessed him, and on the whole, his profile was fine. There were a few little attention problems, but I felt that with rehabilitation, he would be able to overcome those. And what he agreed to do was to let the board know, talk to the board about the treatment that he was going to get, and then come back and see me for another assessment. In that situation, there was no need to make a mandatory notification. He actually contacted me about a year later. He returned back to his studies, and he had passed, and he was planning for his first uh, job as a doctor. A psychologist will make an assessment based on many factors. So in borderline cases, there's various things that I would think about. First of all, the situation in which the person is working. Sometimes people are working excessive hours with very little supervision or support. I'd look at what the family are telling me, with the patient's permission, of course, and also any work colleagues, again, if the individual is happy for me to do that. The neuropsychological profile is obviously very important in that regard, but sometimes it can be borderline, so I have to look at other, other issues that might be helpful in deciding. Whether there has been any concerns by the person about his or her work is also important. So they might come and say that they've, the trigger for coming to see me is because their manager was expressing worries or concerns. But also how much insight that individual has how much knowledge do they have or how much awareness do they have that there might be an issue? And that really leads on to how willing they are to put into place treatment plans, going for rehabilitation if they've had some cognitive problems, willingness to seek further medical opinion where necessary. I think all of these factors are helpful in, in considering when or not you, whether or not you need to make a notification. In rare, high-risk cases, mandatory notifications are necessary. Quite some time ago, I saw a female uh, medical practitioner. She had been persuaded to come to the assessment by her family. They were very worried about her memory. And on testing, there were big concerns that I identified. I was also worried in terms of her clinical presentation. But in addition, this poor lady didn't have any insight into her condition at all. She didn't see that there might be a problem with her performing her role at work. Because there was a substantial risk of harm to her patients, a notification was necessary. A mandatory notification is not the end of the road. It might be one step to getting well. 
Some of the practitioners that I see are very worried that a notification might arise as a result of seeing me. But we talk about this. First of all, it is very rare. And second, if there is a notification made, it's not the end of the road. It's actually the beginning of a process where the individual is seen to be getting the right amount of help at the right time by the right people. The whole process is collaborative. They work together with the practitioner and all the help that's needed is put into place. So it really isn't and shouldn't be seen as a death knell to someone's profession, but a beginning of ensuring that they're safe to practice. It's important to break down myths about mandatory notifications. The health practitioner community must prioritise this and support their peers and colleagues to do the same. So as a healthcare practitioner, I also need to look after myself and make sure that I have a good work-life balance. So important, so important. I'll go and see my GP if I need to, and if I needed to, I'd go and see a psychologist. I know that in my circumstances, there wouldn't be any need to make a notification, and, and that should be the way for all of us needing help. We shouldn't be barred from seeking help because we're worried about a notification. For more information about mandatory notifications, visit the APRA website. We encourage practitioners, patients and their families to seek the help they need via these independent support services.